Hey guys, in today's lecture, we'll be discussing how to resolve ambiguity using IC analysis. Now, you may know what an ambiguity is. But before moving on to the part of resolving ambiguity, let me give you a brief recap on what an ambiguity is. Now, ambiguity is an uncertainty in meaning. It can either arise at the level of words, such as in the case of lexical ambiguity. You may have learned the lexical ambiguity of the word bank. Now the word bank can either mean the financial institution bank or it can mean the edge of a river, a river bank. Now that is an example of a lexical ambiguity. Now you may also be familiar with structural or syntactic ambiguity where the ambiguity arises because uh, the words in a particular sentence construction or in a construction may be related to the other words in that construction in various ways. When a word in a sentence construction is related to other words in a sentence construction in different ways, it may give rise to structural ambiguity. Now, the example for structural ambiguity is often shown with the phrase old men and women. Now, here the phrase old men and women here in this phrase the old is an adjective now this old can either modify just men now if the old modifies just men then it will come somewhat like this right old men and women now this can be represented somewhat like this so here the old is modifying just the noun phrase or noun men here in this sense old is modifying just the noun phrase men here the adjective old is modifying just the noun phrase men so this is again a big noun phrase and then you have this coordinating conjunction and and then you have this other noun phrase women now in this sense this may mean a group of old men and women who may or may not be old. Usually, this sentence is used to denote old men and young women old men and women it can mean old men and young women a group of old men and young women now in the second sense this can mean a group of old men and old women in this sense the word old here is attached to both men and women the noun phrase men and women the word old here the adjective modifies the noun phrase men and women the entire noun phrase men and women here it means a group of old men and old women that the vrittharayittulla men and women sheerna oru group sthreegalum purushanmarum sheerna oru group ipo thanne what i have done is i have presented ambiguity using ic analysis now for your exams they might ask you to resolve ambiguity using ic cards now in such instances they would always give sentences which are structurally ambiguous or sentences which have syntactic ambiguity or constructions that have syntactic ambiguity now let's take a look at some of those constructions and let's get to know how we resolve them using ic analysis now let's take the sentence ingrid saw the martian with a telescope Ingrid here is a young girl. Now, Ingrid saw the Martian. Martian is a person who lives in Mars, right? An alien with a telescope. Now, when you analyze the sentence, it can either mean that Ingrid 
the girl, the young girl, the woman or the young girl Ingrid saw a Martian with a telescope. So here the Martian is carrying the telescope. Now the, this can also mean that Ingrid saw a Martian with the telescope. Here Ingrid is using the telescope. So see the surface structure is Ingrid saw the Martian with, with a telescope. Ingrid saw the Martian with a telescope. Here Ingrid saw the Martian with the telescope. And here Ingrid is the person who saw the Martian who carry the telescope. So with the telescope, the sentence can also mean Ingrid saw the Martian, saw the Martian through her telescope, the, with the telescope. So the act of seeing here is done by Ingrid. Now how do we um, disambiguate the sentence using IC analysis? Now let's look at this. So here Ingrid is the noun phrase, right? Saw is the verb. The Martian can be considered as a noun phrase. And with the telescope can again be considered as a prepositional phrase. Here PP is a prepositional phrase. Now uh, the Martian here is a noun phrase and that noun phrase is closely associated here with the prepositional phrase. So the Martian with the telescope. Here with the telescope the prepositional phrase is attached to the noun phrase the Martian. The Martian in the varayana noun phrase who attorney prepositional phrase are attached directly. Right? The Martian in the varayana noun phrase my attorney prepositional phrase are attached directly. So Ingrid saw the Martian with the telescope. The Martian with the telescope. So here the prepositional phrase is a part of the noun phrase. The Martian with the telescope and the varayana the one noun phrase are. The Martian matra la. The Martian or in the noun phrase under the Martian with the telescope and the varaymo e prepositional phrase e the Martian or in the noun phrase or the Martian with the telescope. The Martian with the telescope. We would have the Martian on a telescope carry jane on the lana e noun phrase lana e prepositional phrase attached title. Upon the name in a representative machine and Ingrid is the noun phrase, saw is the verb. Then the Martian is again a noun phrase. Now, uh, with the telescope is a prepositional phrase and that prepositional phrase is attached to the noun phrase, the Martian. Now, this verb and the noun phrase which carries the prepositional phrase together constitute the verb phrase. E verb this verb in that, this verb phrase in the verb ganam. This is a noun phrase only. This noun phrase in that, that any prepositional phrase The Martian with the telescope and the prepositional phrase We can represent it like this. So the sentence comprises of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. The verb phrase, the noun phrase here is Ingrid. In the verb phrase, we have the verb saw. Then we have the noun phrase which is the Martian. Now the Martian with the telescope. The Martian is the person who carries the telescope. So this prepositional phrase uh, is embedded within the noun phrase the Martian. Martian is the telescope with the telescope and the prepositional phrase is close. So here uh, with, the, with the telescope is closely associated with the noun phrase the Martian. So this is how it is represented. Here this prepositional phrase is connected to the noun phrase. The Martian, the Martian with the telescope. That noun phrase is a part of the verb phrase. Saw the Martian with the telescope. I hope that it was clear. Now, in the second sense, uh, the importance is to the act of seeing. So, even a verb or any prepositional phrase attached to it. Because he saw with the telescope. Now, but the verb saw, Ingrid saw. The Martian is there with the telescope. So, Ingrid saw with the telescope. Our uh, verb phrase or any prepositional phrase attached to it. Like verb phrase or any prepositional phrase, then who did that? Then do that. That is noun phrase or it connected. That is verb phrase. That is there is this verb uh, which is saw and uh, 
uh, Ingrid saw with the telescope the Martian. Ingrid saw the Martian with the telescope. Ingrid anuvide telescope lude Martian kaanunadu. It is Ingrid who sees the Martian with the telescope. So here the act of seeing is done with a telescope. So ivide saw him with the telescope uana. Uh, relation on the right they are closely connected with each other so here uh, the prepositional phrase here is correct connected directly with the verb phrase other one done verb phrase where it directly connected down there would a noun phrase where it is the noun phrase where it is connected I am going to the pole Martian to guide in a telescope but she would have the Ingrid saw and were in a verb my turn little verb phrase my turn a e uru with the telescope Martian a card in the end which it on a with the telescope people with the verb phrase my turn a propositional phrase connected I reckon with that other one down a number a propositional phrase a verb phrase why to connect to the reckon a kind of us in grid on a saw the Martian with a telescope she is the one who sees a Martian with the telescope so it is represented like this i hope that it was clear now now again let us take this particular picture here here ingrid saw the martian with the telescope here ingrid saw the martian with the telescope so the martian uh, with the telescope the martian the noun phrase is connected with the prepositional phrase with the telescope right so ingrid saw the martian with the telescope and the second sense ingrid saw the martian with saw the martian with a telescope so ingrid is the person who sees the martian so the the act of seeing the martian is done through the telescope so here with the telescope is attached to the verb phrase with the telescope about a prepositional phrase a verb phrase where it is attached to the saw in the verb saw the martian in the verb phrase why it is a prepositional phrase connected again ingrid saw the martian with a telescope i hope that it was clear now let's come to the second uh, let's come to the second ambiguous sentence which is i wrote the letters on the kitchen table so here the subject is I. I wrote the letters on the kitchen table. Now when I say I wrote the letters on the kitchen table, when I say I wrote the letters on the kitchen table, it can either mean that the letters that are there in the kitchen table, I wrote the letters on the kitchen table. So the kitchen table is filled with letters and I am the person who wrote the letters. Okay the kitchen table is filled with letters and i am the person who wrote the letters on the kitchen table so i wrote the letters on the kitchen table the kitchen table is filled with letters i am the person who wrote the uh, letters now it can also mean i wrote the letters on the kitchen table which means here as you can see here i wrote the letters on the kitchen table uh, the i wrote the act of writing the letters was done on the kitchen table so i wrote the letters i literally wrote the letters on the kitchen table so i wrote the act of writing was done on the kitchen table so there are two possible meanings here one is the letters are already written and the the, the kitchen table is filled with letters and a person is saying i wrote the letters on the kitchen table the, uh, the letters that are there on the kitchen table was written by me. Adana, I wrote the letters on the kitchen table. I wrote the letters on the kitchen table can also mean the act of writing was done by uh, done on the kitchen table. I wrote the letters on the kitchen table. The act of writing was done on the kitchen table. Here again, we have the noun phrase I and we have the verb wrote now the letters here is the noun phrase right the letters here is the noun phrase and on the kitchen table i wrote the letters on the kitchen table here uh, the prepositional phrase is connected with the noun phrase the letters i wrote the letters on the kitchen table the letters on the kitchen table in the bar another or immature noun phrase at tomorrow the letters on the kitchen table or immature noun phrase at tomorrow e prepositional phrase in noun phrase in other the letters on the kitchen table we are referring to the letters 
again a noun phrase on the kitchen table which is a prepositional phrase the prepositional phrase here is inside the noun phrase right anganeyanu ivadathe depiction vannirikkunnu idu pole thanne nammal ini adutha case nokkanengil nammal nerthe parna pole i here is the noun phrase wrote is the verb the letters is another noun phrase and we have the prepositional phrase on the kitchen table but here the on the kitchen table is uh, is connected to the verb phrase which means that i wrote the letters wrote ennu parayna a verb aayittana ee prepositional phrase connect cheyirikkunnu wrote the letters on the kitchen table appo ee oru verb phrase wrote the letters ennu parayna verb phrase aayittana ivide ee prepositional phrase connected aayirikkunnu i wrote the letters evade irunna appo act of writing aanu kitchen table lochu nadandirikkunnu so i wrote the letters the verb wrote the letters on the kitchen table here the prepositional phrase on the kitchen table is connected with the verb which is wrote or this on the kitchen table is connected with the verb phrase wrote the letters wrote the letters nu parana verb phrase um aitana prepositional phrase ivide connected a irikkunnu nerthey kanda same type of resolving ambiguity aanu same so almost similar diagrams aanu rendu സെൻറ്റൻസസിൽ നമുക്ക് കണ്ടത് റൈറ്റ് ഹിയർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ദ വുമൺ ഓൾറെഡി റോഡ് ദ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ദോസ് ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ആർ റിലയിങ് ഓൺ ദ കിച്ചൺ പീപ്പിൾ ഐ റോഡ് ദ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓൺ ദ കിച്ചൺ പീപ്പിൾ ഓർ ഇറ്റ് മീ റെഫർ ടു ദി മാനുവൽ ആക്ട് ഓഫ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് ദ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓൺ ദ കിച്ചൺ പീപ്പിൾ സോ ഇൻ ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് കേസ് ഓൺ ദ കിച്ചൺ പീപ്പിൾ ദ പ്രൊപ്പോസിഷണൽ ഫ്രീസ് ഇസ് ക്ലോസ്ലി കണക്റ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ദ നോൺ ഫ്രീസ് ദ ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് letters on the kitchen table there the importance is to the noun phrase the letters the letters on the kitchen table and in the second sense the importance is to the act of writing i wrote the letters on the kitchen table kitchen table la vachittana njan letters ezhuthiyathu there the letters the noun phrase is closely connected with the verb phrase wrote the letters i hope that it was clear now let's move on to Uh, the next uh, structural ambiguity which is sam invited old men and women to the party now if this is sam then sam invited old men and women to the party as you can see the woman here is not old so uh, here old modifies just the men right then in the second meaning in the second layer we have sam invited old men and women to the party there old the adjective modifies both men as well as women so here both the man as well as the woman are old now how do we represent it using uh, ic diagrams so here the sentence sam invited old men and women to the party has the noun phrase sam then it has the verb invited and uh, from there on the verb phrase begins now we have old men now when you take old men together now that is a noun phrase there the adjective old modifies the noun men so here the noun phrase that we take is old men it is taken together which means that sam invited old men and here is a coordinating conjunction then there is women so he invited old men by sai vridharaya nenni neem women neem women can be young because this old is not attached to the woman here it is at only attached to men in the first instance it is only attached to, we take it in such a way so that the old is attached to the men only ivade old ennu parayna word modify cheyina men enna noun ne mathram aanu appo sam invited old men by say men in him women in him party ki invite cheyidu nan ivade ee prepositional phrase ne matte iduvayittu valiya connection illa ivadathe ambiguity varunathu ee oru particular phrase la thaniyana nammal nerthe kanda pole old men and women ennu parayumbo this old adjective may modify just the men or it may modify the noun phrase men and women and on a second case il varu rather sam is the noun phrase invited is the verb here old the adjective modifies the here you can see the noun phrase men and women men and women nu parayna value noun phrase ne modify cheyina 
adjective one in the old and worrying. Evaluate a noun phrase in a modified in adjective one in the old and worrying. And again, uh, the entire thing uh, invited old men and women to the party becomes the verb phrase. But the entire thing in that tomorrow, this entire thing becomes the verb phrase. Right. And if the adjective and men and women in the worrying again. This uh, adjective, this noun phrase, in the other modifies it. So this is how it is written. I hope that this too was clear. Now let's move on to the next or the last type of ambiguity that we'll be discussing here again. This is another type of um, structural ambiguity. Same ambiguity is there, structural ambiguity. But here again, let's take a look at the sentence construction. Students avoid boring professors. See here, when you say students avoid boring professors, here boring professors can be an adjective and noun. Boring in the boring professors. Boring professors means professors who are boring. Where are boring at all professors. Professors who don't teach with a passion. And the other thing is, professors who are boring. And the other thing is, students avoid boring professors. There it is an adjective or noun. Now, here boring is used to modify professors. Professors who are boring. Students avoid professors who are boring. And the other first in the meaning. Students avoid professors who are boring. Students avoid professors. Who are boring it can either mean students avoid professors who are boring or it can mean students avoid boring professors students avoid the act of boring professors now here boring is a gerund form of to bore two plus infinitive form on to bore and the right even the gerund form on a Boring in the rain. That is a verb form. When a verb functions as a noun, it is known by the name gerund. So here when you say students avoid boring professors, here it means students uh, avoid boring professors, which means that they don't bore professors. They don't bore professors in any way. They try to be active in class, so they don't try to bore professors in any way. Angani on the students avoid boring professors. To bore and the varena verb in the bore plus ing form and the varena gerund form. Where boring is a uh, verb form that acts as a noun boring professors. Students um, students avoid boring professors means students will not bore professors with their replies or with their uh, lack of attention. Students won't bore professors with their lack of attention. And not very either. That the other thing is inquisitive item questions are which are ready. They avoid boring professors in any way. So out of boring and or in the action chain of our students are first case of boring professors no are in the boring in the it was an adjective noun which was used to uh, modify the noun professors, boring professors, boring professors are boring professors. Now, in the second case, it is the students who won't bore the professors, who would always ask inquisitive questions, and the students themselves won't bore the professors. In the sense, in the second case, so this is how the IC analysis is done in both cases. There is this noun phrase students, then there is this verb avoid, other verb phrase and avoid boring professors. The entire thing is a verb phrase. Now you have um, the verb avoid, then you have this adjectival noun boring, uh, which is an adjectival noun. It is an adjective which modifies the noun professors. So either random go to the mature NPR and this entire thing is a VP. Now, this entire thing is a sentence. Now, if it is NP students, uh, again, we peel a V and avoid, then boring in the arena, it is a gerund form, the gerund, which is 
2 plus infinity form in the ing form and the boring and the bore and the act in the ing form they won't bore uh, you know students avoid boring the act of boring and the larger the professors they avoid the acts of boring professors in any way professors in a bored diet to make a kind of enthused diet to make him by asking questions and all the details on students avoid boring professors out there you see the killer I hope that you were able to write these down. So this is how you resolve ambiguity. Now please go through these notes again and try to understand what it is all about. But thank you for listening to this lecture. Take care.